Happy company, but of course we're going to be talking about the big conflict that is unfolding in Israel this morning first, where the government has formally declared war against Hamas, a Palestinian militant group who on Saturday at 6 a.m. local time began launching rockets into Israel, leaving hundreds dead. Now for more on this, we're joined by Australian journalist Gabrielle Briner in Tel Aviv and the Zionist Federation of Australia's Director of Public Affairs, Dr. Bren Khalil in Melbourne. Thank you both for coming on the program this morning. Gabrielle, let's, uh, let's start with you. It is uh, just after 1 a.m. in Israel. Uh, what have the past 48 hours been like for you and exactly how safe do you feel? Thanks so much for having me. They have been absolute chaos and hell, to say the least. I am definitely not safe. People in Israel are just feeling reeling from the feeling of loss, chaos, confusion. There are over 700 people dead. Uh, who knows how many unaccounted for? Reports of maybe over 100, 160 live Israelis, captives in Gaza. I am hearing now just outside my window just booms of the Iron Dome interceptions dozens of kilometers away from my home. So I am definitely not feeling safe. The situation is ongoing, escalating, and we really don't know where it is going. We are in a state of war, a state of emergency, and it is absolutely terrifying. So, Gabrielle, you're one of many Australians residing in Israel at the moment. Has our government extended their support? No, and in fact, I actually just checked their website, uh, the embassy, uh, the embassy website, the Australian embassy here in Israel, and they haven't written anything about the conflict. So, no, haven't I know heard. The DFAT have put out a warning so far for travellers going to that area, obviously, but they haven't said anything on the website yet. That's interesting. No. Uh, Gabrielle, uh, what about the Israeli government? On one hand, they're at war. O on the other hand, they're obviously helping civilians deal with what's happened and what is, what is happening by the second. It's an unfolding situation. How are they coping and how are they helping? Right, so the government's an interesting one, actually. We are seeing, of course, complete cooperation in terms of uh, the IDF and the government rolling out some kind of operation. The first priority is to get the Hamas terrorists out of Israeli territory, where there are still uh, Hamas terrorists infiltrating and fighting Israeli civilians in Israeli territory. So that is the first priority. Uh, in terms of helping the civilians directly, we heard thousands and thousands of pleas of families who have who are ringing up news stations absolutely desperate trying to get some news of their lost loved ones. We're talking about young people who are at a desert rave. I'm sure you've seen the harrowing images of them just being chased by gunmen. We're also talking about people who are living in the south of Israel who were just having a chilled Saturday morning at home who were just completely taken by surprise after terrorists gunned armed gunmen just breaking into their house. They're ringing up, asking, begging and pleading for information from the government. And the government has unfortunately not been able to provide that because Israel was taken completely by surprise. Now, we also know that Israel is a, um, Israel's government right now is one of the most extreme that it's ever had. And Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister, is the longest reigning prime minister um, in Israel's history. And he has been uncharacteristically silent and kind of keeping things very subdued in terms of his own messaging and his communication with the public. So, it's been an interesting one, but we've seen beautiful displays of uh, solidarity of the Israeli people today. I just, um, on my way to reserves training, uh, with, which I was called up to, I uh, saw um, one of the big central areas in Tel Aviv, hundreds of people just packing boxes to be sent all across Israel to families and, and people in need. So there's just a beautiful display of civility here um, from person to person. All right, Gabby, just hang on there for a second. We're going to bring in uh, Bren Carlisle now from uh, Melbourne. Bren, let's just go back uh, a few days here. Uh, we know there's been some breaking news just in the last few minutes alone that Iran seems to have their finger on this as well. But, you know, what's happening here? What's happened in the last few days that we've gotten to this point in Israel? Well, I think there's two things. I think um, the fact that, that Iran's fingerprints are all over this is no surprise at all to people that have been following the situation. The level of sophistication of this attack is far beyond anything that Hamas or the other Palestinian organizations have done before. And we know that Hamas has been training intently with Iran uh, and with Hezbollah and, and other Islamist organizations. And so the idea that, that, that Iran helped plan this is, is unsurprising at all. And, you know, the, a Senate committee earlier this year recommended that the government change Australian legislation to allow the prescription of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, a, a part of the Iranian um, regime, to be prescribed as a terrorist organization 
one of the definitions of a terrorist organization in our legislation is assist in the doing of a terrorist act and there can be no clear proof that the IRGC should be prescribed by Australia. My Brent, uh, we're just, sorry, uh, just really quickly jumping in here, uh, we were just sort of hearing this morning that this even took Washington by surprise. That, I think that's from the Washington Post as well. You know, Israel is, is you know, has a great military there. How come there was no sort of chatter about this beforehand? How were they taken so much on the back foot? It's, that's the question that everyone's asking. It, it, this represents a colossal failure in military intelligence. I think the, the focus right now will be on uh, uh, securing the safety of Israeli civilians and uh, getting back the Israeli captives in Gaza. Once that is done, then uh, recriminations will begin, there will no doubt be an investigation and answers will be sought, uh, but I think the focus right now is on is on securing the situation. Mm. This has been described on the front page of The Australian today as Israel's 9-11. I mean, this isn't just a land grab, this is entrenched hatred, isn't it? It is, and uh, you know, it, 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 you might remember that, that in Mumbai in 2008, the Pakistani terrorist group Lashkar e Taiba um, uh, attacked multiple targets um, in a terrible situation that involved massacring many, many civilians. The, the, the depravity of the attacks here remind me of when the Islamic State took over and rampaged through large parts of Syria and Iraq about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is the level uh, and this is the type of organization we're dealing with. And it is not about the occupation. It is not about Palestinian independence. It is about destroying Israel. That's what's in the Hamas uh, constitution. It's what their leaders say and it's what their actions uh, represent. Gabrielle, I want to bring you in just really quickly before we go. It's, it, you know, it is a live situation that's happening there right now. It's changing all the time. You, uh, do you expect to, to stay in Tel Aviv now or do you think you would come home to Australia? And if you are coming home, how difficult is that going to be? Right, so that was exactly the conversation I was kind of having with myself yesterday when I was taken by surprise by the horrific acts of Hamas. Um, I was thinking about coming home, of course, but I had friends that actually had flights booked yesterday and they were all pretty much cancelled. So it seems a little bit unclear what's happening with the airports. Right. And at the moment, we're taking it day by day in Israel. It's warfare. It's very uncertain. We are under attack. There are terrorists infiltrating not just the south of Israel. They're even saying there might be Hamas terrorists now traveling all over Israel. So really anything is possible and we're just taking it day by day i'm not sure if i'll be able to come home maybe it's even safer to just stay put who knows well we wish you well stay safe please and thank you for your insight today doctor thank you for coming on the program as thank well you, yeah we will continue our coverage